that title is a little bit clickbaity. I'm not swearing off layers completely, but mostly. And in this video, I'm going to explain why. I'm gonna give you all of my reasoning, along with photos, so that we have a full picture. I'm also going to be refreshing my hair. There's a reason for that that we will get into further in the video. I just really want you to see the texture range that I have in my hair. Welcome back, and if it's your first time here, my name is Janelle. We do all things curly, <laughs> wavy, <laughs> and then some. Let's get into it. The first thing I want to explain is what I really mean by no or minimal layering, and then we'll get into the why. For visual purposes, essentially what I mean is pretty much from my temples down, this bottom portion of my hair, with this hair, I want it to be virtually all the same length, root to tip. <laughs> Only slight length variation that I'm aiming to see in this layer is just slightly from the back, a very exaggerated long U. No V. <laughs> a really wide U. Where it just slightly tapers up on the sides and my hair is forward as it is most of the time. The front pieces are not substantially longer than the back so it has a really square shape up front. And for this top layer it is essentially just long layers and then just up front some face framing. I'm almost back there. <laughs> I was there about two years ago. I'm almost back. This side of my hair is mostly back there. This side still has a little bit of growth and evening out that I need to see and essentially just enough growth so that there's root to tip fullness. All right, now let's get into the why. So one of the first reasons um, that I am going with no layers is because of how much my texture varies. So as you can see here, this is like day four, maybe five. I have gently detangled, so without detangling, my hair would probably have a little bit more definition than this. In general, without refreshing, especially in the winter, my hair tends to loosen up like this and have a more wavy appearance. I would say I have a fairly normal texture range. Most people have multiple curl types in their head. The thing is, is they look substantially different. Most of the time when I have gotten haircuts, my hair is substantially curlier. It's on wash day. Then if I allow it to loosen up throughout the week without refreshing, I end up having, you know, this wavier look. What tends to happen is there are more visible gaps in my hair and visible length differences. If you've been here for a while or follow me on Instagram, um, you know that I rock my hair fluffy all the time. It's actually one of my favorite looks. It's a go-to, but I do still want the option of having my juicy curl. So essentially, I need a cut that can flatter both, and in my experience over the years I've played with the different hair cutting techniques and different layering, having a consistent length on the bottom three-fourths of my hair and the perimeter is ultimately what gives that to me. I'm gonna use the weed ad out of thin hair <laughs> jelly. So another reason um, I am foregoing layers. In my experience with layering, my hair grows out like shit. <laughs> and that's not a dramatization. Here's the thing, I have gotten two really beautiful cuts with layers since I started focusing on repairing my hair after my bleach damage. Both of them were beautiful initially. As it grew out, one of the first things that I start to notice is that I start to lose curl definition. Even on the best of wash day with my best routine, my curls were not bouncing up. It felt almost impossible for me to get those really tight ringlets that I would normally see. So not only were my curls not forming, but then I also noticed that it was harder for me to maintain a shape. And it seemed like every time I got layers, I had a harder time growing out my hair. <laughs> and that leads me into my next reason is breakage and split ends. I'm a little bit prone to getting split ends, but when I first started this journey and when seeing my stylist regularly, I was able to keep up with them. My hair was growing, no problem. But what I noticed after I got the layers the first time is that I was seeing more and more split ends and then I was seeing more and more breakage in places like here, around my ears, at the nape of my neck. And so what I realized, <laughs> I always kind of knew, but I finally really accepted, was that I really need the strength in numbers. What was essentially happening with these layers is that they were exposing more of my curls. So these individual fine curls that had previously 
previously had a ton of protection, we're now taking the world on, taking sleep, taking environmental factors on, on their own. So this is more exposure and over time that additional exposure meant that more areas of my hair were seeing split ends and breakage. Not only did my hair need the power in numbers, if you will, to also just so I could maintain and aim for length, I also realized that my hair also needs the power in numbers to get to its full curl potential. As I mentioned earlier, over time when I had layered styles, as they grew out, and I'm not talking like like six, eight months grow out. I'm talking like a month or two grow out where you should still be able to maintain a style at most just need a dusting. At those points, my hair, as I mentioned, was really struggling to bounce up. Because my hair is fine, the clumping, the additional support of other hairs was actually encouraging some of my looser patterns to clutch onto something and bounce up with everything else that's going on. It's completely normal to have a wide variety of curl types on one head. Um, I have many, but I, for the most part, was able to get pretty consistent performance with styling products and techniques. And as soon as I added layers over time, I started seeing more inconsistency around my hair and those same areas that used to participate were no longer curling up. And it really highlighted the various textures of my hair is the truth and not necessarily in a good way, especially around like the nape of my neck. I have um, some like some of my curliest curls, but then I also have some of my waviest and now they had substantially less to clutch onto. So instead of bouncing up with everything, they were just, you know, scraggling along down by themselves and I'm not a fan. <laughs> so it needed the power in numbers, but also really needed the weight from a, the power in numbers for full curl potential. Speaking of length and weight, I also have a cowlick at the very back of my head, right at the crown. I had multiple stylists say to me, oh, if they add short layers on the sides right here, and then also a little bit in the back that it'll cover that cowlick. And what I found is that taking off the weight from this section and right here is that it actually further enhanced the cowlick and exaggerated it. Instead of them bouncing up and covering that space, they actually bounced up and pushed forward, exaggerating it. I'm gonna add a little bit more product. The biggest reason the biggest reason I am no longer adding layers other than what I explained at the beginning of this video is because layers kill my density. Kill it. And they like back over it and run over it with a truck. Kill it. I can't emphasize that enough. I know a lot of us have been told that layers give the illusion of more volume. And while that is very true for a lot of curl types, that is not always the case if you have fine hair, if you have medium to low density hair, and or waves or a looser curl pattern in general. When you think of volume, you have to think of where you want it. There is a difference between a full look and height. So when I first asked my stylist about two years ago to change up my cut from a pretty consistent, no layered look to a layered look, I told my stylist I wanted both. I wanted height, I wanted fullness, I wanted it all. And at that point, my hair had grown out a lot. Most of my hair was same thickness, root to tip. And so we just thought, you know what? We think your hair can handle it, let's try it. Oh. So while those layers that were added did give me height, they killed my density. So think of these rude clips as height, right? This is height lifted up off of the head. Density and overall fullness and volume is essentially something that's going to be all over. In order to get height, you generally have to cut shorter layers to pop those layers up. And as you bring those layers up, you are killing the fullness and the shape at the ends. Quick visuals. Side by side of my hair with the root clips and without. Next, I'm going to show you a side by side of my hair when it was root to tip full, full, and then just after I had cut it and put a ton of layers in. Curls still look great. I'm not saying that they don't, but if you can see in both of those photos what happens as you lift these layers, you lose the fullness here. And as much as I wish my hair would sit up like this 24 seven, 
I don't wish it at the expense of fullness because that loss of fullness ultimately caused all of the issues that I mentioned previously. Other thing that I wanna throw out there, and this is a very personal thing, is that all the layering just really just made the back of my hair <laughs> look awful. I'm gonna show you a picture of the back of my hair at like one point when it was extremely healthy. And here was about six months ago with a bunch of layering. If you have medium to low density hair, but especially if you have low density hair, that layering and those gaps can give the appearance you have even less hair. And that has definitely been the case for me. Yeah, I get a little bit of natural height, but in the long run, it looks like I have substantially less hair, leading to a more stringy, less bouncy, full curl. Wanna have a staring contest while my hair dries? Just kidding. I'm gonna let my hair dry, I'm gonna fluff it, and then I'll see you in a second to wrap this up. This isn't my best refresh work, y'all. <laughs> if you wanna see me actually nail it, watch up here. I show multiple ways for refreshing. Um, I still have sick brain, <laughs> and I'm trying to do multiple things at once, and I don't think I'm doing a great job at it, so hopefully this all makes sense. Um, but in general, something to keep in mind, things that I stated, are not necessarily going to be true for everyone, but they are very true for me. And I know it's going to be true for some of you as well. Um, just today, maybe it was yesterday, in my Facebook group, another person, same thing, looser curl pattern, probably medium density, noticed that after they got a bunch of layers put into their hair, their curls were not bouncing up like they used to. And that doesn't necessarily mean you got a bad haircut, it doesn't mean you're going to a bad stylist, it just may mean that you just need to adjust the cut that you are getting. Okay, that's not horrible. I do also want to throw out there that I still really do believe in the curl by curl cut for curly hair. I do still wholeheartedly believe curls should be cut dry. One of the best stylists I've ever been to was a diva curl stylist, um, but she was a level three and she understood curly hair enough that she could adjust her technique so that she wasn't necessarily giving me a diva cut per se, but she was giving me the shape and everything that I wanted while using the technique to cut the individual strands. In general, when going Going for a curly haircut when picking a stylist, I would say that is one of the most important things is that your stylist understands curls, that they understand different textures, different densities, different curl patterns, and regardless of if they were trained in a specific curly hairstyle, they know how to use their training and adopt it outside of that bubble for whatever your hair needs are because a good stylist will be able to do just that. If you're in Las Vegas, I'm going to link Deshaw, my stylist in Vegas, down below. Also, if you you are in Philly or near Philly, I'm going to link Victoria who has been trimming my hair since moving to Philly. Love them both and both do exactly that. They use their skills and adopt it around my wants and needs to give me my desired cut. Let me know if you have any questions. I will be answering them down in the comments below. If it was your first time here, my name is Janelle. We do all things curly sometimes wavy, and then some. If you learned something or just enjoyed hanging out with me for this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Go slam that subscribe button, hit that bell while you're at it to turn on post notifications so you do not miss a thing. And I will see you next time. Bye. I leaned back. I just realized she's been with me the whole time. Hot huh, blowers. She's almost 12.